Uh, welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Jake Fuller with my co-host, the big dog, Ed Braddy. And uh, Ed, I've got to start off the show by mentioning that 30-point pounding with the Gators gave Arkansas. That was a great... You know, yeah, and Arkansas was undefeated at home or something like that. Yeah, it's just good to see, you know, as Gator fans, we deserve a blowout like that, you know, where we don't have to worry about it. It's not a nail-biter right down to the end. And so I was... I was, I was Happy to see that happen. Yeah, and I'm happy to report that uh, the Gator baseball team won two out of three in the series with uh, Cal State Fullerton, and uh, they're ranked number one in the country. And as I mentioned Friday, uh, my dad was part of the 1962 team that was honored on the field, so that was kind of cool. The grandkids got to come out and see their granddad, so that was a hoot. Did he just come out, or did he get to throw a He got to steal home plate. (laughs) My daughter, my seven-year-old daughter goes, Granddad's too old to play baseball. <laughs> I said, "Well, that was you know a long time ago." So but all- no, they all they walked out the team to the to the pitcher's mound, and then they announced them, and it's including the stats. Number one, the first Gator team of any sport to be ranked number one in the country, and then they called out each of the players by name. They could step forward, and then I thought the classiest thing though was as that ended is right before the game, so they're walking out. The Gator, the current Gator team, came out of the dugout and all surrounded them, shook hands and everything. So that's kind of cool. So, so, and then, and then, you thought your dad was sliding into home, and then you realized when, when he yelled out, <laughs> I, when he yelled out, "I've fallen and I can't get up." The hip just blew out. Yeah. Yeah. No, there are no injuries among the uh, the uh, older gentlemen there. So yeah, that's, that's kind of fun. So anyway, happy uh, happy President's Day, everybody. And you know what that means, Jake. Mm-hmm. means President Obama came out of the White House and saw a shadow, so he's gone yeah. back inside. That'll mean seven more months of high unemployment rates and unconstitutional executive orders. Or or maybe four more years of insolvency. You never know. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, you know, but we tried. Yeah, um, well, uh, on on the good front here, I've got some good news is that uh, Governor Rick Scott appointed Winston Bradley. Uh, yeah, to, that is. That came out on Friday, wasn't it? Friday night. It Friday was night, yeah. No, which is uh, unusual, I guess. But uh, I didn't see any negative comments by the liberals or the the liberal media. I mean, what can they say? You know. Um, yeah, he has a stellar uh, biography. You know, um, veteran business owner. He's been involved in many uh, civic uh, activities, including serving on the board of trustees for Santa Fe College. Um, yeah, he, he's just has, he's a, has a great, great reputation, great level of engagement. And he's a pastor. And, he, and he's a pastor, yeah. So, so but then... But and then, see, Pat, Rodney Long left the commission to join the ministry, and now a minister has been picked by Governor Scott to join the commission. To take his place. Well, um, and, and, it, and it's interesting, too, that I haven't heard any... Um, well, actually, I saw one comment that said, oh, just like the Republicans... You know, playing the race card, you know, that kind of thing. Appointing a, a Republican, a black, you know, that kind of thing. Well, hey, he's a black conservative, uh, you, know, you know, diversity on the county commission. But I haven't heard anybody accuse him of being an Uncle Tom or anything because he's a Republican. But, uh, you know, eventually they'll get around to it. Mm. And they, they, well, can't, I mean, they can't shut up the, Those on the left need to get over it. They made the rules. We're just playing them, by, play by the, the rules they created, you know. Yeah. And, and there's nothing to suggest he's not uh, Im, you know, eminently qualified for the position. You yeah. Know, so. But but they can't um, they can't control themselves. Eventually somebody will start making negative comments. And yeah. uh, it's just down, you know, coming down the pike. So. Uh, but anyway, congratulations to to um, and that uh, it'll be interesting to see how much that tips the balance of power. Uh, I I have uh, I know I've known Winston Bradley for a number of years, not not closely, but I've I've you know conversational uh, you know friendship with him, and uh, he's he's not an ideologue. You know, he's not going to come in there with a hard set agenda and and try to you know, push it on the community before his term ends. Uh, but he is conservative, you know, so it, it, it'll be interesting to follow these issues and to see how st- now that the county commission is split two to two, essentially, he is the icebreaker. I mean, he's the tipping point. It'll be interesting to see, one, if staff presentations about these issues of growth management, of transportation, if they change any. Because, you know, when, when Randy reads the, the manager and they're playing to a four to one and then, worst case scenario, a three to two majority, they could just be, you know, as over the top, in my opinion, as you can on 
the need to you know, coerce people out of their cars, the need to waste money on these boondoggles, the way to impose higher densities, even though most people don't want it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if they change how they present that information, because now they're appealing to someone who's instinctively conservative, but he doesn't bring a hard agenda to the table. And the thing is, everything I've heard about him, he, I don't think he's going to be um, bullied by Mike Byerly. Oh, no. I don't think he'll, you know, he's not going to be persuaded by Mike Byerly. He's, he's uh, uh, you know, keeps he plays his cards close to the vest, and I don't think he's going to be... Uh, very easy to read by Byerly, who's been, you know, noted for what the past 12 years of manipulating other county commissioners yeah. into his position. So, so we, we look forward to having. Well, him if on you the got commission. opinions on uh, the appointment and how you think it might tip the scales, let us know at three seven two three ninety nine five. We'd love to hear from you. Now, uh, I wanted to mention that today early voting started for the county commission. I mean, for the city commission runoff. Uh, the at-large city commission runoff between Nathan Scott and Lauren Poe. And it just, you know, this is the supervisor of election making, uh, uh, making it easy for the people in the Duck Pond area to vote early because it's uh, the only place you can vote. Um, let's see, it's at, uh, well, at the administ county administration building at uh, 12 Southeast yeah, First, just First Street. So... Uh, making it easy for the Duck Pond liberals to vote, and everybody in District 2 out in the Northwest, they got to drive all the way downtown to vote. Yeah, and so obviously most people aren't going to do it. And they're no. saying, well, maybe I'll remember on next Tuesday, or maybe it'll free up time next Tuesday to do that, and we hope it does. But the fact is the entire purpose of early voting was to create convenience for the voters. But as you, you're pointing out, it's really only creating convenience for a very specific and very small demographic group that is overwhelmingly liberal in their orientation. Well, you know, in the past they've had early voting at the um, at the uh, at the, the library the, over yeah, on Forty Third Street fact, and uh, out at Tower Road. And in fact, know, I believe it was it was open for the um, you know for the original election back on January thirty first. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, gosh, I guess they just don't have the resources, you know. But yeah. uh, funny how that always works out. It seems like when it comes to a runoff like this and there's a liberal involved, which there always, always is. You can only open up downtown. Yeah. Let's take Darlene on line one. Welcome to the show, Darlene. Hey, guys. Uh, you must have been reading my mind. I, I came down 43rd Street hoping to go and vote today and realize that it's not open. That just infuriates me as a voter. Gosh, you wonder why. I mean, do you think it's just because they don't have the resources? Well, you know what? If you're going to do early voting all the time, then you should have all the places that people early vote open all the time, whether it's a runoff or a general election. Uh, or, you yeah. know, that to me is outrageous. I'm sorry it costs money, but, you know, that's our tax. That's the way the tax is. That's why our if this is the only thing that we waste money on, it's not wasting money because it's a let's face right it, to vote. And the city contracts, I guess, don't they contract with the Alachua County Supervisor, Supervisor. of Elections? So. Well, not, but not only that, I think our libraries pay our taxes. We pay library taxes. Yeah. So why, why aren't these libraries open so that people can vote? It's just, you know, it just seems yeah. like uh, it's very suspicious when the... It's not or, suspicious. When, You're just being too nice, when the, nor, when the When the conservative uh, Northwest, they don't have a place to vote. they got to go downtown. Yeah. Well, both libraries. You have the one on Tower Road and you have the one on 43rd Street. I mean, let's say it's facts. The worst thing for a runoff... Uh, nobody votes for a runoff anyway even if you made it convenient, but let's not make it convenient unless people vote. That's why 5% will vote for for the runoff, and I think it's sad. I think we need to speak up and maybe get something done with a petition or something like that for whenever this happens again because it's sad. Yeah, and I'd like to hear from the supervisor of elections. I mean, maybe, maybe they, she'll call in or yeah. maybe we'll get They We know they listen to the show. I catch uh, grief every time we say critical comments. So yeah, maybe they can, maybe she they can call, call in. Get, three seven two three ninety nine five. Yeah, she can call in. Give us an excuse. Okay. All right, thanks. We appreciate it. We've got to take a break here on Talk of the Town. We'll be right back. It's 372-3995. All right, we're back on Talk of the Town. and uh, You know, despite what we were just saying, Jake, I do want to encourage all Gaines villagers to go vote. 
James Villager. A new term coined by uh, candidate Lauren Poe. Yeah. I, it's pretty creative. You know, Gainesville, Gaines Villagers. So, every village, you have to have a village to raise a kid or something, you know? Yeah. No, I think it's it takes a village to raise your, your GRE rates. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah, it takes a so, so maybe she should, maybe he should be the new, he's the, the Hillary Clinton of uh, of Gainesville, I guess, if he's coming up with a village it thing. It takes a village, it takes a Gaines villager. Well, during the break, uh, Jessica said that somebody had called in, I guess, on the previous show and said that the reason uh, that we don't have um, other voting other, areas uh, other vo voting venues open for early voting is because the city commission decided they didn't want to spend the money on it. So how convenient. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, okay, assuming that's true, if you're the constitutional officer to, you know, appoint, you know, elected to be the supervisor of elections, you have an obligation to ensure fair elections. I'm just asking you, how in the world can you call it fair that the 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 only convenient voting location the week before the election during early voting weekend is a very small enclave of very liberal voters. You can't ignore voting history, especially if you're the supervisor of election. You're probably more familiar with voting history than anyone else in the city and in the county. Yeah. And so, if you know that this particular area historically votes about 85% for the liberal candidate every single time, and then you make voting for them the most convenient thing to do, but not for anyone else, how can you say that's fair? So, so in other words, if the city of Gainesville said, well, this is all we're going to fund, then I think you would be obligated to say, well, thanks, but no thanks. We, we're not going to have any early voting unless you can make sure it's there. Are, there's fair access all across the city, then we, we can't do it for any one place over the other. Yeah, and people like my wife who travels a lot because of her job, she, if she wants to um, you know, vote early, she's going to have to go down and fight the bottleneck of, of, of Main Street, try to find a parking space, uh, yeah. and, then, and then walk over there and, and vote. So it's, just, it's, just, it's really inconvenient for a lot of people um, unless you can walk from the duck pond. And uh, anyway, let's take uh, Bill on line one. Welcome to the show, Bill. Hi, um, as far as uh, contacting the Supervisor of Elections, um, your listeners should know she can be reached directly at 374-5258. That number rings on her desk. Um, on another note, the reason I called is uh, my eighth, eighth grade uh, daughter in the eighth grade has a project to do. Um, it's a five or six weeks project, and um, she's decided to write uh, pros and cons on the biomass plant. And I've learned a lot from her this past weekend. Um, one thing is that the newly elected commissioner from the east side of town, I don't know her name, I don't vote in her district. Hanson uh, Rawls, yeah. She claims that this, uh, you know, it's all been sold on the fact that, or on the uh, theory that the fuel is sustainable and it'll all come within, from within a 75 mile radius of the plant. And um, also that Supposedly, there are 5.5 million acres of timber in that 75-mile radius, which is enough to sustain the plant, they say. Um, I don't know how you, how you uh, sustain growth of timber uh, over a 30-year period. Um, and yeah, I think... You know, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. When it takes 100 million, uh, what, 100 million tons per year, I guess, to keep this plant going, I could be wrong about that. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that timber is going to be, um, you'll be in a competitive, uh, in competition with uh, paper companies and other, you know, other uh, companies that use timber. So the price is probably going to go up. I mean, uh, you know, if if if. Uh, if uh, you know one of the paper paper mills say over on Fernandina, they have to buy buy timber. Um, you know that's just going to be a competitive market, and so Gainesville is going to be paying a premium price. So yeah, supposedly uh, as soon as the moment it goes online, our uh, energy bill will go up four point three percent, and that's just at the when this thing kicks off. When they find out how much it costs to keep it running, um, you can expect that to go much higher. Well, I'll tell you what, it's really interesting when an eighth grader can refute the the, uh, the Gainesville City Commission, you know? <laughs> well, she, she, I... I know she's not trying to, but just the facts that she's coming up with 
with you. Well, it's it's all in it's all there on the internet. Um, yeah. You know, it's just it uh, depends on whose side you believe. Of course, I'm teaching her to not drink the Kool Aid, so um, she's you know hopefully going to lean to the right. And she's got a skeptical eye, which she needs to have in this day and age. All right. Well, we appreciate the call. Uh, let's take John on line two. Go ahead, John. Hey, good afternoon, guys. I'll tell you what. I don't care if it takes the folks an hour to get to the polls. If it take, uh, if they have to drive 10 miles. It don't matter. It would be the most money they ever made an hour if they vote for stop. Because if they don't vote for stop, their bills are going to go up anywhere from 15 to $50 a month, if not more, if this bomb ass plan goes in. I'll tell you, these, these idiots on the city commission... They just literally handed Greg a monopoly on our energy needs for the future. We gotta buy every megawatt of power that thing produces. In other words, I'm paying sixty dollars for six hundred megawatts now. And if if they have to sell all this megawatts to produce it, I, I could end up paying for as much as well as to use hundred megawatts. Did you, I'm only using six hundred megawatts. Yeah, did, did you realize Did you realize that, that uh Greg they wanted to um they wanted to uh, in, originally, they were going to sell the extra 50 megawatts of power. You know, they were going to sell that on the market. And Gainesville said, uh, GRE said, no, no, we'll do that. So, so we took it on ourselves. It's like we're being run by a bunch of complete imbeciles. Or as Mayor Lowe might say, incompetence. <laughs> incompetence. I mean, how do, you know, yeah. So, so now we're stuck trying to sell it at, at you know on a market that, and we'll be, you know, nobody's going to buy it when it's overpriced. So. <laughs> Kerry doesn't even want to buy it. Who else is going to want it? No one's going to want to buy it. If they do sell it, they're going to sell it at a loss, and we're going to have to pick up the difference. I well, mean, maybe we can sell it to Portland. Portland. You know, maybe we can sell it to Portland. I mean, maybe the liberals yeah. need to step up to yeah. the plate. So, yeah. all right. Well, thanks. They, they, they need to get to the polls. It'll be the most money they ever made in our getting down there. Because if they don't get down there and vote for Scott, we're going to be stuck with some big utility bills. Yeah. All right. right. Thanks. I appreciate the call. Let's take Debbie on line one. Go ahead, Debbie. Well, I agree with their callers. Of course, everyone needs to get to the polls and vote for SCOMP. And they need to get on the telephone and call everybody they know, their friends, their families, and their neighbors, and urge them to go vote as well, because this is definitely a rigged election. Well, and we I... know that it's rigged because you just said we only have early voting for downtown. And I just called Pam Carpenter. And, of course, she, you know, cited all the laws, which I understand that if you only open one, it has to be at the elections office. But it's our city commissioners and mayors that decided to rig the election by only opening one site. And that's what we have to raise hell about as citizens toward, to the mayor and the commissioners that they would allow a rigged election like this. And, you know, you're not going to hear one word of criticism on the editorial pages of the Gainesville Sun for this kind of behavior. You will not hear one criticism of the city commission or the supervisor of elections. You're not going to have, you're not going to hear anything from the media at all. I mean, they, so it, as far as they're concerned, never happened. You know, there's no problem. Um, which you're I just, the only media that we have. Well, I just think it's a travesty that, uh, that, uh, you know, that, that people in the Northwest and uh, all over the city, except for right down, right around downtown, they have to drive all the way downtown and find a parking space to, to vote. And they know people are busy, you know. And uh, shame but, on our mayor. The mayor low has got to go. That is not leadership to allow a rigged election. That's well. What do you expect? Site? What do you expect from somebody who just announced, and it was in, in the Alligator? He announced that that he is a proud member of the Obama Truth Team. So. There you go. This is where the guy's coming from. You know, he, he worships at the feet of another politician, liberal politician who rigs elections. Um, you know, this guy got in under questionable uh, under questionable terms, you know, when, when 42 votes that were questionable. And so what do you expect from this guy? You know, uh, well, for him to be having an emotional meltdown on TV 20, saying that it's suspect the timing the county wants to kiss GRU goodbye. It's of his own making because they requested the information back in September, and they just now got the information last Tuesday. He didn't, that was he their didn't, first chance. To he didn't mention that, did he? No. Oh no, no. no. Uh, well, he's you know he, he I think he's an embarrassment to the city because he is a thin-skinned, immature. His reactions are completely immature. I mean, it, it, there's no call for that kind of behavior. And, and to Todd Chase's uh, credit. He tried to uh, send an olive, leaf, uh, olive branch to um, the county commission and say, 
the mayor was not speaking for the rest of the city commission or the city of Gainesville, and, and he was thanked by Commissioner Pinkison for at least making an overture to basically apologize for the mayor, mayor's behavior and his accusations. So we want to say you know, thank you to Todd Chase for acting like the only Being adult. Being grown up. <laughs> yeah, the only adult in the room. So. Well, maybe we can get a new mayor soon. And yeah, maybe we can get a new adult on January or. February, what's the date of the runoff? Yeah, well, well, we can't let yeah. this thing slide with this rigged yeah. election. We all need to be raising hell with the mayor and the commissioners to allow only one, you know, downtown um, early voting. Well, look yeah. at all the, you know, yeah. look at all, and look at all the stuff that's that's gone on that nobody has uh, reported on in the press. Uh, we had we had firefighters in uniform going to go, going door to door which is a violation of city ordinance uh campaigning for Lauren Poe um you know we've had uh you know we've had this this early voting uh rigged election going on uh, all there's all sorts of in, in dis, you know just discrepancies that are just inexcusable and nobody's saying anything about it it's just business as usual well, it's got to stop, and I think the citizens, it's time for us to raise hell and, you know, start attending these you know, commission meetings. Absolutely. And you're, and you're the only media. Thank you so much. Maybe TV20, they, they'll step up every now and then, but to get the Gainesville Sun, I mean... <laughs> yeah, well, you're not going to get... You're, it's, like I said before a million times, it's not the information they print, it's the information they don't print that matters, because they just don't print a lot of stuff. That should be there. Yep. Yeah, All right. Well, thanks for the call, there. Debbie. All right. Listen, folks, uh, stick with us. We got a lot more to come on the other side of the break. You're listening to Talk of the Town only on the Star 99.5. The Precious Mills Report is presented by Coin and Jewelry Gallery at 2007 Northwest 43rd Street in the Millhopper Shopping Center. Current market conditions for gold is $1,735.70 per ounce. Silver is selling for $33.67 per ounce. And platinum commands $1,657 per ounce. That's your Precious Metals rep Report presented by Coin and Jewelry Gallery. Uh -huh. Stumbled at the end. They screwed it up. That's All a right. fun day. My uh, vocal cords just had the weekend off. I, f I feel refreshed after that. Okay, let's take Ray. He's been waiting patiently. Welcome to the show, Ray. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Commissioner Hawkins's letter to the uh, Gainesville Sun. The one uh, on the bio on the bond rating for GRU. Yeah, yeah okay. correct. And, and I hesitate to do it because I I I, I actually uh, appreciate Commissioner Hawkins' uh, civility when he runs a civic uh, city commission meeting. So I don't mean to open up a barrage against Thomas Hawkins. I think. Uh, at least as far as how he, he treats uh, residents, he, he certainly does a lot better job than others on the commission whose names I won't mention. But but I think it's really Hello. important to put <laughs> whose names I won't mention. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I think it's uh, it's it's actually uh, important to look at what's not said between the lines. I think other folks have always pointed out that obviously the most important thing on bond rating is the commitment of the commission to raise rates. And that's all that really matters. The diversity of, uh, of uh, fuel is an important matter, but it's not in the sense that people use uh, the word diversity among people. It's not because it's a good thing to have one kind of fuel or, or, or in a mixture of fuel. It's because you don't want to have your plant shut down. If you've got 70 percent of your fuel in coal and something happens to the price of coal, delivery of coal, then the bond raters, the, the bond holders aren't going to get paid because the, the plan is going to shut down. So that's what they're talking about with diversity. The bottom line is if you've got a city commission whose bond covenants say they'll pay, they'll raise rates on rate payers no matter what, you're going to get a good rating. And that's why GRU has the third highest rating. Right. So I do, I in, in other words, it's not a value judgment on biomass. It's just a value judgment on a diversified portfolio. If, if we were, if we were going to claim to produce the same through nuclear power or through wind power, it would be a claim for diversity. You know? Exactly. exactly. And, and one of the things that was noted, and I think Thomas noted, that, at least it was noted in the Gainesville Sun article, and that is that uh, there are uh, backup sources of, uh, of power. There are other utilities who have committed to come in if, if the coal uh, plant shuts down. So there are other, there are other avenues. Uh, but the really important error I think that Thomas made, and I don't think it's intentional, but when you when you look at, at the one of the things he says is every time a plant goes online, the price is going to go up. 
But this isn't a plan. This is a PPA. This is a power purchase agreement. In fact, I think it's undisputed that if, if we don't need the power, but if we had decided to buy power from someone else, we're not talking about building a plant, but to buy power from another utility, it would be considerably less uh, in, the, in the order of magnitude of 40% less than, uh, than the biomass plant. So I think it, it's incorrect to say no matter what, rates would go up. In fact, it's not true. As everyone knows, if they've listened to your show, I think Debbie Martinez repeats this time and time again, uh, the city of Tallahassee in 2008 uh, it had high rates like the city of Gainesville did. Pegeen Hanrahan, as you remember on the commission, used to have a sort of contest between Tallahassee and Gainesville of course, once Tallahassee started winning that contest, it's not been talked about again. But since <laughs> since 2008, Tallahassee has dropped their electric rates 23%, and they uh, killed their biomass plant. They were looking at a biomass plant. People came out and said, no, hell no, we don't want it, and so it didn't happen. And so you're talking about a swing of 23% on one end and uh, you know, 7 to 9% on the other end. So you're talking about over 30% swing, which is really the proper discussion here. We're talking about people paying 30% more than they have to pay, not going up 7 to 9%. I think that's important. So, so you know, I know you're trying to be nice to, uh, to Commissioner Hawkins, but uh, like you said, when, when the people in Tallahassee said hell no to a biomass plant, when we say that, his reaction is he tells GRU you just politely ignore them. So uh, you know, so that's that's the reaction of the city commission. They don't want to hear from their own cons their own ratepayers. They don't they don't care. I mean, you know, and, and and I think it's proven with this AA rating that, you know, they're more than willing to raise rates. Doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter to them. They're not out. So so we have a a GRU which is supposed to be owned by the city of Gainesville, the people of, of Gainesville. Uh, they should be providing the cheapest source of energy for their ratepayers. And they're doing the exact opposite. They are going against what they they were intended to do. Now, I just find that outrageous. Well, I, I agree with that totally. And if I could hit some data points rather than uh, than general arguments, I really like to. One of the things Thomas mentions is 700 jobs, uh, which is a mantra that's been repeated over and over again. Here's a data point that anybody can get if they put in a public records request. Uh, Greg is required to file uh, monthly reports as to the number of jobs, to the progress. It's a public record. You can get it. Uh, there should be one coming out now for January. Usually they come out about the 20th, 21st of the month. Every month it shows that the vast, vast majority of those construction jobs, and I mean in the neighborhood of 90 percent, are outside of our community. People coming in from Texas, people coming in for from Fagan, which is located up in uh, Minnesota, they're not local jobs. The people, that, people that have worked on biomass plants before, so they know what they're doing, yeah. T t typically so. Yeah. Uh, but, but in addition, the 700, the so-called 700 jobs, which is, which is up from the 160, which is what was told at the beginning of this, those jobs, we know that 99% of the forest land in the 75-mile radius is outside of Alachua County. So if there were 700 jobs, they wouldn't be helping the folks in Alachua County. So that's one thing. The other thing I think is really important to mention that fell between the lines. If you read the Gainesville Sun story, the COO of GRU, Jennifer Hunt, said, you know, we've got a, over a billion dollars of debt. Now, I went back and looked at the old annual reports. Uh, you know, Thomas talked about 1905 when the utility first came into business, that they issued their first bonds. Now, between 1905 and the mid-2000s, uh, the debt went from whatever little amount it was in 1905 to about half a million dollars, excuse me, half a billion dollars. In, uh, in, and Bob Hunziger, the new general manager, who I'm sure is, is, was hired because he's going to work with the commission, and he has. He's really worked with the commission <laughs> for, for good or bad. But the first, when he came to Gainesville, the debt at the end of the calendar year, the fiscal year for 2007, was $574 million. By the end of his first year, his first year uh, as general manager, it had risen to $749 million. Now it's over a billion dollars, and that's reported. And what's happening with that? Where does that loss come from? It comes from tens of millions of dollars of wrong bets on interest rate swaps, which had to be replaced out. Uh, Mr. Hunziger, I'm sure that he believes that he deserves it. The city commission believes that he deserves it. But he's in his coming up on his fourth year here. By this summer, he will be, have been paid more than a million dollars in salary, more than a million dollars. The top executives at GRU 
you got a couple dozen people there who are making more than $100,000 a year. You've got a brand new facility, a $52 million facility on North Main, which has public art in it that the public can't see, which has a spa in it that the public can't use. You've got a facility on South Main Street that was miscalculated by the order of magnitude of millions and millions of dollars. I'm talking about the Depot Park. That, that money has gone in there. And every year uh, you get a new... Uh, a new um, amount of money that can't be paid on bonds. So we're paying interest rather than the principal. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up. When you talk about a $37 million uh, transfer and you see the long-term indebtedness going up, it, it's not that this is being paid. This is money that's being borrowed against our future. Mm. And the biomass plant, it's true. It won't go into the debt. That'll come out of people's pocket every year. And so it's, it's a matter of spinning numbers around and I think one last thing that i like to say, there were two questions that were asked at the Thursday City Commission meeting. I've asked them, other people have asked them, these questions were totally ignored, and the City Commission has yet to answer them. Number one is, the contract provides that GRU can perform an equitable adjustment without ever coming back to the City Commission. On March 16th of this year, they did an adjustment that went up over the term of the 30-year BPA, $100 million dollars. The City Commission has never talked about that. The question that was asked to the City Commission on Thursday was, do you have any oversight over these equitable adjustments in the future? The question was not even addressed. The other question that was asked has to do with the wood contracts, the contracts for paying for the woods, the direct pass-through to the citizens of Gainesville. Uh, the provisions of the contract seem to provide that those will be a pass-through, that they'll never come back before the City Commission, that will be totally up to GRU. And the question was, has the City Commission abdicated its authority to these folks at GRU to do this? The question was not answered. The people of this community are really upset, like and rightly so, for not having their questions answered. And that's where the anger comes from. And that's where a lot of the disrespect, and some of it is disrespect, uh, before the Commission. When you go to somebody and you ask them a question and they pretend like you're not there, you know, maybe Gandhi wouldn't... Uh, act out, but a lot of people would. So I think that's what's going on, and I think it's really important that when the county commission tries to exercise their fiduciary duty, that they be treated with respect. I think when citizens come before the commission, they should be treated with respect, not politely ignored. Politely is better than the way that they're treated in some instances, but they shouldn't be ignored. When citizens ask questions, this question should be answered, and it is the height of arrogance to say to the county commission and to the citizens, as has been repeatedly said, where were you two and a half years ago? Two and a half years ago, a contract was passed by the city commission, each of which city commissioner knew what was in it. They didn't tell the public. How would the county have anything to talk about until the contract was yeah, out there? Absolutely. I mean, how are we supposed to know? Most of it you couldn't you couldn't read, you know, so... Well, you made some great points, Ray. We've been, we've been uh, talking with Ray Washington. He was a, a, a candidate for District One, and uh, we hope you run for something in the future, Ray, because you're, you know, you're one of those kind of people that uh, we need in, in in government who's honest, you know, and and it's not trying to pull the wool over people's eyes. So we, we appreciate. Well, keep reporting, it. keep reporting the facts. They need to be reported, and if you all can just hammer and hammer on, what about these future costs? Three point one billion is bad enough. But if they're going to be future costs, let's find out. Is the city commission going to exercise its duty about those? Please keep asking the question until we get an answer. All right, we appreciate it. You know, right. you know, it's almost like, uh, like I said before, it's like the Obamacare uh, bill that you know Nancy Pelosi said. Well, we have to, we have to pass it before we find out what's in it. Well, that's what that's this violence. That's exactly what we're hearing here. And and, and, and two other observations is that uh, you know. I wonder, Mayor Lowe was picked for the truth team. The Obama yeah, truth team. I was going to say Hunsinger. I mean, he he should, would have a great. He'd feel right at home in the Obama administration. I mean, he's running up debt. Yeah, that's a pretty devastating little bit of data that it doubled uh, our Ray, doubled the know, debt. Well, and, yeah, basically doubled the debt in four years. What a what a hallmark. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, we got to take a break here on Talk of the Town, and we will be right back. Let's talk ninety nine. At gmail.com. Ed, I, I wanted to ask you a question. When you were on the city commission, how much easier would your job have been had every time a, a constituent asked you a question, if you just politely ignored them? 
Yeah, I mean, wouldn't that just be easy? Just show up. That's, I guess that's standard. People want to ask you whatever you want. We just don't have to ask. Uh, you know, ask about it. Yeah, I mean, they ask hard questions, and you just don't answer them. You know, the 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 thing is, we used to get you know when I was on there, and this is yeah, this is what I would call call constituent service, and it's you know when me being a political minority on the commission. You know, I put a lot of uh, attention to constituent service because that's the only thing I was really in control of. And, um, you know, we would get requests all the time, sometimes it's questions we don't have answers to. And so you always direct it to the manager, Mr. Manager, can you get a response for this? And then usually, uh, at least when I was there, I think the uh, manager had a 30-day window, and usually he did it within a week or two. But there's that window, and, and if, and if the, the body, if the commission directed the manager to provide a response to a constituent request, it went on a list and you could you could track it. Thirty days, you got a written response to that question. And so it's strange that that's not a practice going on because that was something, you know, Pagin Hanrahan, to your credit, did not dismiss. I mean, it was, it was an institutional practice that predated her, but she didn't kill it. And, yeah, but, um, but at the time... Boy, you, boy, sure hasn't Craig Lowe killed it. But at the time, you were not trying to push through a very controversial biomass plant. And so yeah. you didn't have to cover anything up. Yeah. Uh, let's take Walter on line one. Welcome to the show, Walter. Hitting hell, Ray Washington Seekers. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. What was that again? Who gonna, who gonna the most, most out of Ray and Armando? Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, no, Ray got a few more votes than Armando did. Just a few? I, I don't know the exact number. Maybe a hundred, couple hundred. I don't know. Uh, but, but in the the rank order of uh, the finalists were uh, Henson Rawls got above fifty percent, and then it was Ray Washington, then Armando Grundy. Uh, Ray be able to figure it out. We would just had two number questions up there. He and Todd, they'd have been butting his. I don't think it would have been too good for both of them, you know, at the yeah. same time. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, we appreciate those comments, and uh, we'll just take Ben on line two. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, guys. Um, I did a little research. Uh, I'm from Pennsylvania, and our my uh, the capital of Harrisburg just filed for bankruptcy. If anybody goes online, put in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania bankruptcy, they just bought a <clears throat> one of these uh, biomass plants, and that's one of the things that put them under. Mm. Mm. And it's real easy to research. It's right there. And they just went under, what, October 12th of last year. Well, uh, you know, on the positive side, there's always a silver lining. If we, if the Gainesville, if, if the city of Gainesville goes bankrupt, I guess they can't afford bus rapid transit and streetcars. So, mm -hmm. well, <laughs> you know, there's... I would not be surprised. I haven't looked up the uh, stuff about Harrisburg, but I would not be surprised if the elected officials who voted for it are still defending it. Yeah, well. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, it had to be other things. Well, Can't be that. they just didn't spend enough money on it. Yeah, because that's one of the things in politics. It's hard to step away from a decision you made and say, you know, I got that one wrong. They, they just don't do it. They double down. Susan Botcher is a, is a good example of it. Now, she didn't vote for it because she went on the commission at the time. Yeah. But she's become like the most virulent uh, defender of the biomass plant, getting nasty and personal about people uh, who are opposed to it. And she, I, she sent out a, an email to her supporters taking some shots at Ray Washington, who... Who, um, who had called our show earlier. Uh, who's oh. always been cordial. Yeah. You know, I mean, he goes out of his way. Yeah. Saturday, I had a fireman come to the door after I, I went to the tea party and uh, I was home and then someone knocked at the door. It was a, he said he was a fireman. He wasn't dressed up like one, thankfully. Uh, but he said uh, he had a big Poe sticker on. And I said, well, I'm not really for Poe because he, he kind of saw my T-shirt. And uh, so he... Okay. Um, what did we, he say? We started talking. I said, "This GRU contract is going to burn us because it's a, uh, it the opt-out clause was taken out, and it was still we're still bound to it." And I said, "Did you know that?" He says, "No, I don't know that." Uh, I said, "We are you going to look it up to see if it's true that it was in the contract first, then it was taken out when we signed off on it? Are you going to check it out?" He said he would, but you know. So, so here we have a, a fireman. I guess he's just doing his union duties or something. Yeah, I'm sure he has to. You know, yeah. that's the thing. Everybody who's in a union, you have to vote this way. If you live in a certain part of town, you have to vote this way. You know, yeah. people are, they don't understand their freedom. Yeah, it's a shame. Yeah, all right, we appreciate the call. Uh, yeah, that is a shame. Let's take Mark on line one. Go ahead, Mark. Hey, top of the morning. I got the only biomass making any money out here cooking a pot of beans on the wood stove right now. <laughs> but let me tell you something. 
I don't know why Lauren Poe wasn't at the Tea Party meeting on Saturday unless Laurie Newsom just kind of overlooked it or he ignored coming down to speak against Nathan Scott's position on the uh, whole biomass deal and everything else. So uh, I, I'd, I'd like to hear uh, see uh, Poe and, and Scott uh, have a head-to-head -head debate <laughs> sometime. Yeah, I doubt if it's going to happen. He doesn't want to do that. I mean, you know, and we've invited people on the show. I guess they just don't have the uh, the uh, courage of their convictions. They don't, you know, they can't. If they come on this show, we're not going to let them just not answer the question. You know, it, it won't be like a city commission meeting. They're going to have to answer the question um, because nobody's tougher on, on these people than the big dog. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, we never the uh, uh, you know curveball or anything. We just ask straightforward questions that are, are tough questions, but they're not unfair. Well, this is yeah. why this is why Susan Botcher refused to come on. This is why uh, Henson Rawls refused to come on our show. This is why Craig Lowe. Uh, I called the mayor's office and, and he the city commission meeting uh, city commission office and and his secretary called me back and said under the mayor says under no circumstances will he appear on your show. Well, there you go. The guy just doesn't have the courage of his convictions. So um, now there is a uh, forum coming up, but probably not many people will attend because one, it's downtown, and then two, it's going to cost you twenty bucks. <laughs> it says here, this is the Gainesville Sun County Line City Limits blog. The Leadership Gainesville Alumni Association is holding a final forum for the remaining Gainesville City Commission at Large One candidates this Wednesday uh, from 5.30 to 7 p.m. And if you're a member of Leadership Gainesville, it's 15 bucks. If you're not, it's 20 bucks. And the forum is being held at the Smokehouse on, at 104 South Main Street. So fight that, uh, fight that rush hour. Was it, uh, you know, the end of the day, five o'clock traffic? Fight that traffic on two lanes, yeah. one lane each direction to get downtown to spend twenty bucks. But you know, if you are downtown, then I guess you could probably vote. Now, if you have a duck. Duck Pond Homeowners Association badge. Can you get in for free? I don't know. Uh -huh. Well, you can at least walk there. Uh, let's take Sue on line one. Go ahead, Sue. Hey, guys. Um, I was coming into work here at the County Commission building and passing through the, the voter and did my early voting, and um, and I was the only one there. 12.30, lunch hour, rush hour, you know, pedal to the metal. The only yeah, one there. Only one. OMG, this is not good. No, would, you, oh. would you have voted had uh, at a different location had they had one? Oh, well, the mill hopper, of course, is, is, is just sad that it's not open. And again, for the reason that District 2 would be so much more convenient over there. But I have to come here to work anyway, so this is just perfect for me, yeah. as a matter of fact. But, but then, obviously, I'm the only one that is perfect for me. Yeah, if you're downtown, there. it works. <laughs> if, it's, if you're not, it doesn't. Yeah. Right, right, right. So I just want to encourage everybody to please um, talk to your neighbor, make a few phone calls. Um, you have to because a lot of these folks really don't know and they sort of don't care until you help them understand why they should. And then that might get them over here. And we have another week. You know, we have till the 28th to finally make that impact. So just encourage everybody to go out there and, um, and, and make sure that you get Nathan Scott. Uh, supporters out to the voting booth so thanks guys for all you do and these are great great information on a great show really appreciate you and i think so um that on election day unless the city commission has changed things didn't want to pay for it i think there will be uh precincts open all over the city right <laughs> you never know <laughs> you i mean you never know with the city commission the fix is in you know they may decide we just can't afford that. Everybody's going to have to come downtown to vote. So that's right. That 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 would change things in the dynamics. And you, you, they get so smart. It's small, and you know, legally, technically, they are correct. But when you really think about it, it's just wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And and people just want want their elected officials to do the right thing. You know, that's all that we're asking. But anyway, thanks for the call. We appreciate it. Let's Thank take uh, let's take Jody on line two. Go ahead, Jody. Hey, fellas. How y'all doing today? Just fine. Good. Listen, just want to call and thank y'all so much for the service you pride, uh, provide for this community as, as well as the Tom Hayes Morrison Show. Um, I've been a lifelong resident here in Gainesville, and um, I'm pretty much sick and tired, uh, being sick and tired of, of these commissions and what they've done to this community uh, over over my lifetime. But um, I just wanted to say that uh, being sick and tired of this, uh, this mess, um, I did go to a... a um, 
Tea Party meeting and uh, and met um, the players. And basically, I just wanted to say that, that Ray Washington is awesome. He's throwing his support behind Nathan Scott. And I'll tell you what, Nathan Scott is, is the man that we need on the commission. He is a bronze star um, awardee. He, he has served his country honorably. He's got a book out that's amazing. And uh, the, the speech that he gave us at the Tea Party meeting was awesome. And I'm telling you, this is a man of integrity, and that's what we need in this, this community. Um, too long have we suffered at the hands of academia and, and uh, socialist politics, left, you know, leftism, and all that comes with it. And uh, I, just want, I just wanted to call and thank you all so much for what you keep doing. I'd like to second what Commissioner Baird had to say just now. Um, I, I got to meet her. She's a wonderful commissioner. We're lucky to have her. And I just want people to know out there that uh, the Tea Party is not a party yet. It's a state of mind. It's, uh, you know, free markets. It's um, financial yeah. responsibility. It's it's the thing that government. come. Yeah, and it's the thing that come with common sense. And it seems like this community here has done away with common sense uh, decades ago. And and as a lifelong resident of Alachua County, I'm, I'm just sick and tired of it. I'm getting involved. I want other people to get involved. Thank you. I worked with the city of Gainesville 14 years. I was there when uh, Commissioner Brady was trying to make an impact. I saw the struggles he went through as a minority, uh, you know, on the commission and everything. And I'd like to thank him for his service and continuing Appreciate community it. service. So um, y'all will probably hear from me again. And uh, I just want people to know that Nathan Scott is our man. Okay. Get out there. All right, we appreciate Get out it. there and vote, folks. All right, thanks Hey, just lot. on this final note, uh, I'm for some research looking at Alachua County's unified land development code and they have a section of definitions technical definitions things like public facilities reclamation multifamily dwellings swales you know else they define i swear to god it's right there on page 410-35 sadomasochistic practices <laughs> in the land development code not making it up now i don't know exactly what it all means i'm sure it has something to do with the city of gainesville's development review process but it's right there in the document, folks. So you can't do anything this with is farm how animals. Whack we are. <laughs> you can't do anything with farm animals or something. I don't know. That's Say pretty no weird. Way. All right, listen, we gotta take, we gotta let let you go, and we'll be back tomorrow. We're gonna have uh, uh, a, a congressional candidate on uh, Ted Yoho. So we'll see you tomorrow.